Hey class, today we're going to do Mr. Melonhead. So if you're in Visual Communications, click on Photoshop Activities, find the Mr. Melonhead folder. If you're in Digital Photography, go into Assignments on the left-hand side and click on the Mr. Melonhead folder. In the folder, you'll have directions at the bottom, and the first file on top is the file for Mr. Melonhead. So you click on it, it will open up in Photoshop, and we have a bunch of fruits and vegetables and whatnot that look like this. First and foremost, we're going to go to File, New. And we're going to start a new file. We want to make sure that we're on inches. And we're going to make this 8.5 width and 11 height, the same size as a piece of paper. Resolution, I'm going to up to 300. Everything else, I'm going to leave the same and click OK. When we have multiple files open in Photoshop, they're tabbed along the top like a web browser would be. Next, we're going to look at what they call selection tools. The second tool down on the left is a rectangle marquee tool. It looks like a dotted square. If I right click on it, I see the rectangle marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool. From these tools, I can select something in the shape of a square. And when I let go, it's a dotted rectangle. And it looks like the lines are moving, hence what a lot of people call the ants marching. So if I were to go to edit copy, go to my new file, go to edit paste, I have my melon here. And for example's sake, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So if I take out my background layer, we can see right now this checkered pattern when I see it shows that there's nothing there. So I cut out the melon right here with the white square around it. For this project, we do not want that white square. I just simply want to show you what the rectangle marquee tool does. So I'm going to go edit step backwards or control alt Z for people who like keyboard shortcuts. And I'm going to go to select deselect to get rid of my selection. Because when I have a selection going, if I use something like the brush, I can not color outside that selection. It will not let me, but if I go through, I can only color inside that selection. So I want to make sure I get rid of that selection if I'm not working with it. So I go to Select, Deselect up top. Now the selection's gone. The next tool down from the Rectangle Marquee tool is the Lasso tool, where I can go and highlight something freehandedly. And I connect the two, and now I have an awfully bad circle, but still there's going to be white around the melon selected if I copy and paste it. So I don't want that one either. If I right click on the lasso, I'm going to go to the third one down, the magnetic lasso. What this tool does is it magnifies itself to lines, to edges within our picture. This picture is perfect because there's a white background, so there's a clear defined line between the melon and the white on the picture. So I'm going to click once up top here you can see there's a black pinpoint. As I move the mouse down, it's going to put some more pinpoint points. If I have a spastic arm motion and my magnetic lasso goes all over the place, if I messed up so bad, I could hit escape on the keyboard to get rid of it all and start over. Or I could hit backspace and go one by one through point and erase them and go back. Now sometimes the lasso won't go where I want it to go. So I could simply click and make a pinpoint on myself. I could force click it. So I could click here if I wanted to. And when I get back to the first one, I'm going to finish my circle, click inside that first pinpoint, and now my whole melon is selected. There are ants marching around the whole melon. So I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to go to Copy. I'm going to go to Edit and Paste. Now on the right-hand side, I have two layers. I have a background layer, which I could toggle on and off. With the, by clicking the eyeball, and I have layer 1. Next to the layer names, there is a small thumbnail, a preview of what's on that layer. This melon's so tiny, I can't see it here. So I don't, if I have a lot of layers, I won't know what layer 1 is. So I'm going to double click over the text of layer 1 and simply name it melon. Now, I'm on my melon layer. I want to go to edit, transform, and scale. Doing this, I could change the size of the melon. Now I can make it tall and skinny, short and fat. Um, sometimes I don't want to mess up how that layer looks if I'm working with a particular layer that has to stay a certain size. 
So if I go back to edit transform scale, if I hold down shift on the keyboard, then I grab a corner and stretch out that melon, <clears throat> it will keep it in proportion. Now when I'm stretching it out, you could clearly see that the melon is pixelated, but when I hit enter on the keyboard to accept the size change, it goes back to being clear. This will not always happen if you get a poor quality image off Google and you try to make it bigger in Photoshop by going to edit transform scale, it's not going to clear up when you hit enter. So now I have my melon on here. So I'm going to look at this bow first, because this is where we can make a Mr. or a Miss melon head. So I'm going to use a magnetic lasso. And the lasso was easy to use around the melon. But if I start to go around the bow here, it's not going inside every little ridge. It's just kind of going wherever. So I'm going to back up. And I'm going to have to force click throughout this thing. So I can get the little ridges. And get each part of this pasta noodle that will be either a hair bow or a bow tie. All right, so the whole bow tie is selected. I'm going to copy it, edit, paste, edit, transform, scale. So now I have another layer. It's back to name, being named layer one, so I'm going to call it bow. And I'm going to go to my move tool, the first tool up here, and move the bow where I want to. Now maybe I want to put it up in the hair and angle it. The Edit Transform menu has Scale, Rotate, Skew, Distort, Perspective, Rotate, Flip. So I'm going to go to Rotate and just put it there. Now another thing I, I can do, if I'm working with one layer, I could go to Image Adjustments and there's all these different options here. For me, I'm going to go to the Channel Mixer and I could change the color of that bow. So I'm going to make it green. And now it's there, so I'm going to make a Miss Melon Head. For this assignment, you do not have to use every, every picture in here. I've had students in the past still go and Google things like top hats and glasses and put them on Mr. and Mrs. Melon Head as well. Uh, I'm going to show an example of what happens if I do a bad, bad magnetic lasso. So I'm going to quickly highlight this, and this section is going to have... Let's just get some white in there, some extra... So I'm going to copy, paste, edit transform scale. Now I'm going to be making this an eyebrow. So I'm going to move it up in the eyebrow-like position. Rename this eyebrow. Loop. And now if I have unwanted parts here, I could go and take the eraser tool about halfway down and clean up my layers. I can go in, I'd make that a little bit smaller and get rid of all the unwanted white areas. So I would clean this up and make it look good in case I didn't do too well magnetic lassoing it. So I'm going to pretend that I did this perfectly. And I just spent a lot of time working on this eyebrow. I want to do the same thing for the other side, but I don't want to do the work again. Down below our layers list on the right hand side here, there's a trash can and there's this corner or a square with a corner flipped up. If I drag the eyebrow layer to the trash can, I would delete it. If I drag it to this square with the corner flipped up, it duplicates it. I can go to the move tool, move it over, and then go and edit transform, flip horizontally, and now I have eyebrows that are exactly the same. So you could do that with the eyes, you could do it with ears, you could do it with whatever you're doing that you have to have multiple layers of. Next, when you're done, I want you to play with the text tool. The text tool, you click on it, you can select what text you want out of all the choices here in Photoshop, and then the size font you want. I'm going to go with 45, and I'm going to make it keep it a black font. So I'm going to click out here and type my name. I can then place that wherever, but I'm putting my name on it. If you're still working and it becomes the end of the period, you want to work on this again the next day. 
you do not want to save it as a JPEG because when you save the file as a JPEG, it will flatten the image and become one layer like this one is, where we had to cut everything out. We had to carefully cut everything out and paste into another file where if I save this as a PSD file, a .psd to the H drive, then I'll be able to work on it tomorrow. I have all my layers there and I'm good to go. When I'm 100% completely done with it, then I will save it as a JPEG and submit on Blackboard. So today we learned about selection tools. We saw the rectangle, the elliptical, the lasso, and the magnetic lasso. And we started learning about layers because these will come back to haunt us eventually. Layers aren't a bad thing, but they do take some time to get used to. That's all I got for today.